In this video, I'm gonna tell you the story of Taj Boyd, a high school and college superstar who saw a ton of successes, but also saw his share of failure. Through it all, Taj maintained a winning attitude and didn't let pride or other people's perception stop him from pursuing his passion. I've compiled a ton of stats, stories, and small details and wrapped them up in a nice video for you guys to enjoy. If you're brand new here, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoy the video. And at the very end, I'm gonna explain what we could all learn from Taj's story and how it could help us in our everyday life. So kick back and enjoy. Let's go. When Taj Boy was just a kid, he and his family were headed back to their home in Virginia. They were coming from a family reunion in Albany, Georgia. Now, when you go to family reunions, you usually meet at least a few family members for the very first time. And in a complete coincidence, members of the boys' bloodline were not the only family members that Taj would meet on this trip. His dad saw a sign that said Clemson University and decided to stop and ask a stranger how far Clemson was from the spot that they currently were. She told him only a few miles down the road, just follow the paw prints. Right out the gate, this sounds like something out of a movie, bro. When Taj and his dad arrived at Clemson, the secretary asked if she could help him. Taj and his dad were more than content just looking at the old trophies and accolades. Then, in a stroke of sheer fate, the secretary says, Coach Bowden just got back from his run. If you guys want to wait for a bit, you can meet him. So as a kid, Taj Boyd meets the head coach of Clemson Tigers. But that's not it. At some point during their conversation, Coach Bowden says to Taj, Maybe you'll play here one day. Now, of course, Coach Bowden is just being nice. I mean, this is a kid who he doesn't even know, hasn't seen him play football, and obviously neither he nor Taj had any idea how this thing would actually play out before it was all over. Crazy, right? He wasn't even supposed to be there. I mean, the timing had to be near perfect for the events to turn out the way that they did. That detour literally changed Taj Boyd's life. Now, Taj's dad was a huge impact on him growing up. He ordered films for him to watch and bought him footballs that were bigger than the size that he should be playing with at his age. His dad retired from the Navy to spend time and work with his son. He bought him a target that Taj would throw at relentlessly when he was only 11 years old. Like this man was destined to do this, you know? Going into high school, Taj was extremely focused, bro. He and his family decided to move from Virginia Beach out to Hampton, Virginia. This was basically a proving ground, and Taj knew that if he can play here, he could play in college. Hampton had been home to the Vic brothers, Allen Iverson, Tyrod Taylor, just to name a few. Taj Strait dominated in Hampton. Three and a half years that he was there, he went 40 and two. And as a starter, he won two state championships. At one point during his senior season, he actually played on a torn ACL, a feat that would be duplicated by another Clemson quarterback who would come after Taj. Taj was a five-star quarterback leaving high school, and his high school football foundation had prepared him for the next stage in his career. In 2009, Taj fulfilled the prophecy that was made by coach Tommy Bowden when Taj was only a boy. Bowden had moved on and Dabo Sweeney had taken over, but it didn't stop Taj from signing with the Tigers. He redshirted in 09, was the backup in 2010, and then as a redshirt sophomore, took over as the starter in 2011. He threw for over 3,800 yards with 33 touchdowns. He also ran for another five touchdowns as well. Clemson went 10 and four that year and won the ACC championship. During his junior season in 2012, Taj once again threw for over 3,800 yards. He scored 36 touchdowns that year, broke the record for the most touchdowns in a game versus NC State with a total of eight TDs in that game, bro. That's some Lamar Jackson type numbers, bro. He put up 529 yards in that game. He won ACC Player of the Year and beat LSU in the Chick-fil-A Bowl where he was named MVP with 346 yards and three total TDs. Clemson finished 11-2 that year. Now his senior year, Taj had similar stats as the previous two years, once again going over 3,800 yards with 34 touchdowns this time. And while for Taj, those amazing numbers were been there, done that, he had one of the greatest final college football games possibly ever. Check this out. So his last game was versus Ohio State in the Orange Bowl. In this game, Taj set the ACC passing touchdown record, put up 378 yards in the air, 
five passing TDs and then also ran for another 127 yards and another TD and set an Orange Bowl record for total yards in a game. Then to top it off, he led Clemson to a 40-35 to victory. Now that's how you go out, bro. He finished his college career with 11,904 yards, 107 passing yards, both school and conference records. So after a career like that, you knew Taj was ready to do great things in the NFL. But that's where the fairy tale portion of this story ends, and the harsh realities began to set in. So strap up. Taj ended up being drafted to the New York Jets in the sixth round of the 2014 draft. Now, the draft was in May, and Taj was released in August before the regular season even started. What could the Jets have seen in such a short period of time that led to Taj's release? Well, Taj lost the QB battle with Matt Sims for the third QB spot and must not have impressed the Jets very much in the preseason practices because he didn't get very many snaps in the preseason games. He only threw for 17 passes, completed 8 of them for 98 yards. Taj himself compared his transition to the video games that we all know and love. Here's what he said. That's the thing. You never really know what to expect leaving college. You have this perception. It's like when you play video games, right? You've got your guys from college, move them over to Madden, and their ratings drop a little bit. But it's actually a big leap. Here's a question. Why was Taj drafted so low and competing for the third spot on the depth chart anyway after such a great college career? Well, there's a few likely reasons one of which may honestly even deserve its own video. But don't worry, I'll get to that in a moment. But first, for the quicker, more obvious one. First off, like many quote-unquote college quarterbacks, Taj had a unique quarterback skill set that worked great for Clemson's offense. But he ran that spread scheme and was not used to being under center and making certain type of reads, which would obviously hinder his ability to translate easily to the NFL. A lot of scouts believe that Clemson's spread offense really hid a lot of Taj's weaknesses. Clint Portis actually sums it up really well in this clip. With the pistol offense, you got an opportunity to have a run pass option, a threat. So you just read the safety. If the safety steps into the box, Sammy Watkins has the opportunity to step behind the safety and he makes a great play out of this. So when you're given that, that choice, you know, if the safety steps down into the box, you throw the ball. If the safety stay flat footed, you hand it off. Now, Taj was never seen as a big draft prospect in the first place and was looked at more like a college quarterback. Here's an excerpt from an article written before the draft in 2014. His college career was marvelous. He was a thrill to watch. He's a wonderful young man to interview. He will not be a quality NFL starter. And it's hard to tell at this point if he will even be drafted. I'm like, whoa, so much praise to start and then that turn, you know what I mean? He also failed to impress at his combine and at his pro day. He measured in under the six foot one that he was listed as and ran a four eight at the combine. For a short dual threat quarterback, these just aren't great numbers, man. They aren't the numbers you wanna see. And while there are shorter QBs in the NFL that are considered really good and some even considered elite, there are many, many more who can get past their lack of height and never make it far in the league largely because of it. At his pro day, he completed 63 of 64 passes, but if you know much about Pro Day, you know they're designed to be easy and they're scripted and they're done in a comfortable environment with your receivers wearing t-shirts and shorts, unless you're Johnny Manziel. And the issue was how the passes were completed. I know that sounds way overly critical, but this info was gathered from articles that were written around that time period. Apparently, Sammy Watkins and Martavius Bryant had to make constant adjustments to catch a lot of the passes and they weren't as pinpoint accurate as scouts would have liked to see against no defense. For example, imagine a wide receiver running a deep post route but having to slow down significantly to catch it. In an NFL game, that's likely incomplete or an INT, but at Pro Day, it's a completion. One guy wrote that he even ran Martavius Bryant into a TV camera with one of his passes. Now the TV camera could have been set up right next to the sideline or something like that. He didn't go into detail, but this definitely sounded bad the way he wrote it. Now for what I believe is the most interesting reason, and I'm sure a lot of y'all have been waiting on me to get to this, but 
I think the most interesting reason is the fact that Clemson seemed to really just be the perfect storm for Taj. The supporting cast he had included a receiving core that could team up right now in the NFL and make for the deadliest receiver core in the league. And he had all of them in college. He played with NFL star receivers DeAndre Hopkins and Sammy Watkins. And he had Martavis Bryant, tight end Dwayne Allen, running back Andre Ellington, bro. All these NFL guys. Every single one of these guys has seen a certain level of success in the NFL. Two of his wide receivers are legit number ones in the league right now, and the others are starter. While running back Andre Ellington's stats have dropped off, he had over a thousand total yards in each of his first two seasons. And by Taj's senior year, DeAndre Hopkins had moved on to the league, but true freshman Mike Williams popped up in his place, and Clemson just kept reloading. But I think you get the point. His supporting cast was so unbelievable, and you gotta attribute a lot of his success to these guys. A lot of easy reads and short slants and screen passes were made into huge gains and many scouts believe that this and Clemson's offensive scheme were responsible for Taj's college numbers. Now in no way am I trying to say that Taj didn't throw some bombs and also make some amazing plays with his feet man. His physical toughness for a quarterback was really off the charts man. He kept plays alive, he fought hella hard. As far as the negative aspects of this video, this is strictly what I'm finding on scouting reports coming from the time 2012 13 14 and trust me i do realize that this portion of the video is very critical but i'm only trying to paint the picture and answer the question as to why taj was unable to find success in the nfl please don't think for a second that i don't have great admiration for what taj was able to do as a big time d1 college quarterback i wouldn't have spent hours and hours putting this video together if i did not I'm simply pointing out the things that NFL scouts and coaches seem to point to to help give us fans a better understanding as to what went wrong in the transition. So there's that. Also, his weight would sometimes fluctuate during the season, most notably in 2011 when he started the year out 220 pounds and it jumped to 240 by mid-season. No telling what this man was going through in his life at this time, but uncontrollable weight will always hurt your NFL stock especially at the quarterback position. Looking at forums and articles from 2013 and 14, a lot of Clemson fans had mixed feelings about Taj. On one hand, they loved all that he had accomplished for the program. He brought Clemson their first back-to-back 10-win -back seasons since the 80s. But to some fans, he had begun to develop a bit of a reputation for not playing well on the biggest stages. During his senior campaign, the Florida State Seminoles came into Death Valley and demolished Taj and the Tigers 51-14. Keep in mind, Taj was a fifth year senior at this point, and this was a top five matchup. One of the biggest knocks on Taj's resume is the fact that he couldn't beat Clemson rival South Carolina and lost to them again that season, making it the fifth straight time they had lost that matchup, making Taj's record versus South Carolina 0 3. He also only beat Florida State once, and dwelling on these failures in the midst of all his successes may seem unfair, but these matchups are huge deals for Clemson fans. But again, the feelings were mixed because during that same season, he beat LSU and Georgia and would go on to beat Ohio State in the bowl game. But that Clemson team had national championship hopes when the year started, and when a team with national championship hopes has a 37-point loss at home, it just doesn't go over well with fans. After being released by the Jets, in 2014, Taj played in the FXFL, that's the Fall Experimental Football League, which was a pro football minor league for both the Boston Brawlers and the Florida Black Tips. I imagine this must have been a tough time for Taj, man. Going from Clemson Glory to the Experimental League had to be tough, but he stayed strong. And in 2015, he signed another one-year deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers this time, but again, didn't make it out of the preseason before being released. After that, he tried the CFL, but between 2015 and 2016, he was released from two different CFL teams. And later that year, Ty seemed to move on from trying to play professional football. He and former Clemson teammate Greg Hood worked as mentors and instructors at the 100 Yards Football Academy. Ty seemed to be a good guy who accomplished a ton during his life so far and should be respected as such. Although he never played in an NFL regular season game, He's a forgotten college star that worked for everything that he's got, and that's why I had to show him some love with this episode. And a lesson that we can all take from Taj is don't let other people define what success means to you. 
After having an amazing college career, I'm pretty sure a whole lot of people that Taj knew tried to bring him down, probably behind his back, saying that he was a failure for not being able to make it in the NFL. But he didn't let pride get in the way of continuing to do what he loved. He gave it a full go in multiple different leagues across multiple different teams before he ultimately decided he was ready to move forward. And that's just being true to you at the highest level. My name is Flimlow Raps. 